Okay, so we've spent some time deriving these crazy looking equations about the position, velocity, and acceleration in simple harmonic motion. And then we're also able to see how they're related to, for example, omega. So the velocity here is omega a, and this one here, the acceleration, is omega squared a, where a is just your amplitude or your maximum displacement here. That's what this is. So let's look at an example. So here, let's say you're attached to two springs and you oscillate back and forth. So some sort of situation like this. So here you go, you're going whoa, back and forth here like this. Well, first of all, um, uh, by the way, your graph of your motion is like this. So you have acceleration versus displacement. Your graph does this. And the first question asks, how do we know you undergo simple harmonic motion? And if you remember, this graph right here, that tells you everything you need to know. The very fact that you have a negative, a negative slope or a gradient, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that it's a straight line. Now why is that important? Because then you can say then that this equation holds true, that a equals minus omega squared x. Why is that? Because this is the y value. This right here is your x, and this right here, or oh, that would be your gradient or your slope. Maybe I'll say slope instead. We use the same uh, or different words for the same thing here. So this is the slope, omega squared. So that's, that's why this is simple harmonic motion, because of that definition that we learned, that you have simple harmonic motion when you have these two things happening. When you have this thing right here, which is implying that you have acceleration is this. So that is the key thing here. I just want to fix up for that. It's a straight line. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Now what's about the period of your oscillations? That may not seem so easy because all you can tell from this graph right here is the slope. And you can tell that the slope is something. Now the slope is going to be omega squared. This is really what you know, that the slope here, that's omega squared. So if we can actually find the slope of this graph, then we know that's omega squared. And then we can maybe go from there. So let's actually calculate the slope. Now to do a slope, we normally pick two points on a graph and then we take the rise over run or something to that effect. So what if I pick this point right here and this point right here? So I go sort of uh, down this much and over this much. A slope is equal to, so the way we calculate the gradient or slope, well, it's gonna be delta y over delta x. In other words, the change in y values divided by the change in x. In this case, the change in y values is, let's see, it goes from three to zero, so that is three. It's actually a negative value though. And this one right here goes from negative 12 to zero, so that means it goes over by 12. It goes sort of to the right by 12. So if you go from left to right, it goes down by three and to the right by 12. So that means I know that this right here is, um, well, let's guess right here, I suppose what I really should have said here was that a negative slope is equal to negative omega squared. So in that case right there, I can find out that the slope is, in this case right here, negative three over 12, because that's the delta y over delta x. Well, that reduces to, let's see, three divided by three is one, and four divided by three, uh, sorry, 12 divided by three is four. So I get this. So this right here is going to be, um, a negative technically, but then I know that my negative slope equals negative omega squared, so therefore omega squared equals just, in this case I can just say one fourth. That's just because my negative slope equals negative omega squared, so that means omega squared equals the positive slope. Now how do I actually find omega? Well, omega is just equal to the square root of one over four. Well, that's the square root of one, which is one, and the square root of four is two. So that means then I can say that this one right here is going to be uh, one half. So now I know that my omega then is 0 0.5, in this case right here, seconds to the minus one. This is what I needed. I'm not totally done yet, but I'm nearly done. See, because what I've just done here, whoops, like this, I'm just going to circle this because it's not my complete answer, but I'm almost done. I found omega. I found my angular frequency. Now what do I do with that? Well, the omega here is equal to two pi over t, which is equal to two pi f. So sometimes if you need to replace omega with the period or omega with the frequency, these are the equations relating them.
Now if I want the period, then I want t. So then I can just say, fine then, if omega equals two pi over t, then t, I can multiply the t over here and divide by omega. So therefore I can say that the t equals two pi over omega. So in this case right here, it's two times pi over 0 0.5. I could do that, and if I actually want to calculate it, maybe I'll use my calculator here, maybe that helps. So I'll say two times pi is this, divide that by 0.5, and I get that. So I get around 12.6. So I would say then that my period of oscillations is approximately 12.6 seconds. That is my period. So that's how I can sort of calculate the period t here. So it may not have seemed so obvious from this, because all I could tell here was, was uh, acceleration and displacement. And yet, knowing what the slope means, you know, by knowing this equation, the slope gets you omega, and omega can get you the period or the frequency, depending on which one you want. And then finally, we're asked to calculate the maximum speed. Now the maximum speed, uh, there's an easy way to do it. We can go back to these equations right here and say maximum speed equals omega times a. We can just say it like that. So we can say then that the max speed, that equals omega times a. Now a, that's just your maximum displacement. That's your amplitude. That's your maximum displacement. So basically then all I need I just need to know my a because I know omega. Omega, we just found it back here. Omega was 0 0.5. So I know that omega here is 0 0.5, but I need to know my maximum displacement. And this graph tells me my maximum displacement. Look, my displacement, which is x here, it can go from zero all the way up to a value of 12 or back again, or you can say it goes from negative 12. So my maximum displacement here is actually 12. Because of that, I can say 12 times 0.5. And that means then that I have a value of 6 then, because 12 times 0.5, that's equal to 6, so meters per second. So that's my maximum speed. So I hope that shows you that you can actually, by knowing about these equations, but especially Especially, most importantly, knowing about this main equation here, that your acceleration is equal to minus omega squared x. By knowing about that, you can actually solve all sorts of crazy looking situations here. It doesn't matter what it was, if you were going back and forth, if it was a pendulum or a guitar string, anything that's going in simple harmonic motion, if you have a graph like this, you can work with it.